when your when your helicopter went down, were you conscious? What point did you lose consciousness? Uh, the moment that I told myself that I wasn't going to die without seeing my little sister. Um, when my helicopter went down, I knew that I was in severe pain, but, but that I didn't feel it. Sorry, I'm sitting in my wheelchair, so I keep sliding down. Um, like, I knew my leg was messed up. I knew I had a hole in my face. I, I knew there were so many things wrong. But for me, it was just focusing on the future and focusing on seeing the people that I loved and making sure that my guys and gals were okay. Um, but I guess I didn't ever realize that I was in pain because it was, I was so worried about the people around me and what was going on around me. Um, and the moment that I actually got flown into Camp Bastion to a makeshift hospital and I saw my sergeant major and my gunnery sergeant standing there staring at me and crying, that was the moment that I actually realized that I was going home. It was never, you know, I never once thought because of what happened to me that I was going home, but it was because of people looking at me and saying, you know what, we're pulling the plug on this one and we're sending her home. And that was probably the hardest thing that I've ever faced was the fact that I wasn't going to be able to be there and finish out the deployment. But when the helicopter is going down, are you conscious all the way up to impact? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh. Um, and in my mind, it was weird because it wasn't like I prayed or panicked. It was just, I went into slow motion and it was just like I would normally land, you know, five, four, three, two, one, mains on deck. And when my mind said mains on deck, we hit the ground and oh. Unfortunately, instead of landing like we normally would, it was more so uh, on the left side where I was on the left gun. Now, you've done a lot of unbelievable things, right? You first above the knee amputee to summit Mount Kilimanjaro, right? When you went up with Nate and Chris Long and that crew. <laughs> um, I just think you were trying to get up really fast just to get away from Nate and Chris Long. Uh, <laughs> you were 200 meters from Summit in Everest, Everest last year when your oxygen ran out for the whole crew, which you had a chance to go up, obviously, but didn't want to leave your team behind again, which is what you are. You were the fifth-ranked snowboarder in the world when I met you. Um, would you have been this great, accomplished, if you didn't lose your leg and didn't have all these injuries? No. No, because everything that I've gone through at this point, everything that makes me different, every scar, you know, the fact that I'm missing my leg, the fact that I'm sitting in a wheelchair right now, it made me stronger, it made me tougher. And I promise you, it made me more goddamn resilient than anybody out there on the planet. And you know what? It taught me more about life than anything else could. Because I count my blessings every single day. And even though I feel robbed, I feel robbed of my purpose, my career, my memory, my leg, the whole nine. I, I'm able to like wake up every day and count my blessings. I'm able to literally put one foot in front of the other all because of my mindset. At the end of the day, it's all because of my head and my heart, not because of what happened to me physically. And the, the, the number of people that's, you know, you and I talk a lot about you know, being of service to others. And certainly you were in the military, but you're so much more now. And you know, Kirsty's one of my best friends. So you guys know. So she comes and <laughs> she basically my son's aunt. Uh, she comes in and, you know, one of my favorite things in life is to help her up and down my stairs. And we go to places and the, the little kids who come over and point and stare at your leg and how you bring them in to, to explain what's happening with your leg so, so you can give them more strength and power. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Well, I think that's what it's all about. Life's not about me or what I can do for myself anymore. It's about paying it forward and giving back to the communities that we live in. You know, I don't mind doing things the hard way if it means that I can set somebody else up for success. I don't mind people pointing and laughing and, you know, making their jokes or <laughs> any of that if it means that I'm going to set somebody else up for like a happy, healthier, more successful life. What's the thing you're most proud of? Oh, man. Don't give me the cliche answer like, hey, I'm really <laughs> proud, proud to be a, you know, a role model for all the little kids out there. Don't give me that. Give me something you, right now, you were so damn proud of behind your ribcage. That even after I tried to kill myself, I turned it around. 
and thank God you did. Right? Like, you and I talk a lot about that. You never know what lies around next Tuesday. No. You and some of the other ones, right? Yeah. If, uh, if you were successful in taking your own lives, a lot of other people wouldn't be here with us today who you've since saved. And that's for everybody out there, everybody listening to this. And that's why you're so important because it's going to be our crew. This, this immediate crew right here of MVP that talks about it and is able to, to bring this message to the masses that people um, are afraid to talk, especially doodly dudes like me who are always so afraid to talk about the real shit that we all go through. Um, you're going to save a lot more people after the military than, than you ever did in the military. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I am so proud of everything that I did in the military. But that one chapter, it doesn't dictate what else is going to happen. And don't get me wrong. I was, I was devastated when I got out of the Marine Corps. That's the last thing that I wanted to happen. But I also had no idea that it was going to set me up for so much more. I had no idea that it was going everything that I went through, all of that suffering, I didn't know it was going to give me this incredible platform to be able to help so many more people. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing that all of us, you know, can look at, whether we wanted to get out of the Marine Corps or military um, or stay in. I think there's always a way for us to be able to dig down deep and figure out how else we can serve the communities that we live in. I'm glad, too, that we have this GNC line because so many more people will hear you now. And again, for, for everybody out there, you know, Kirsty and I have done a ton of stuff together and, and interviews. And every time somebody sits down to, to meet with her, I'll say, hey, just gonna tell you right now, your life's about to change. And I come walking in there 10 minutes later, whoever the interviewer is, whoo, you know, they're crying their eyes out. I said, I told you, your life is about to change, right? And with this, with, with the GNC deal, um, helping you know, spread the word of, of MVP, Emerging vets and players that, that your message, this message that you, that, you know, you've helped so many in our room, you know, pull people out of their own shell, if you will, that you're not going to be able to do it more so to the masses. Man, Kay, that's a dream come true for me to be able to have happen for you. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, everything that you've done for me from, from the jump, from the get-go, Jay. I mean, everything from walking into Unbreakable to being a part of MVP and to now what you have going on with the Unbreakable line. Um, a, I'm just incredibly impressed. But even more so, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of it. Um, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Because of this, I will have a much bigger platform. And we can use this to, to impact the masses. This is being able to to improve improve the world. We, we're not here to change it, but improve it. <laughs> best, best line I ever saw. Folks, we're sitting in the New York City chapter, um, and Roger Goodell is in there. Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, crying his eyes out because a couple of our MVPers just lost. Oh, man, they lost a couple more this week, K, in the, the two seven, the Marines. Uh, one unit is up to, I think, 48 suicides in one unit. And we had, we were helping to curb it for a little while there. Um, but that week they just lost, I think, the 44th and 42nd, I think it was. And, and you know, the way you were uplifting them, the way we were all talking to them, and, and you know, we were telling them, look, it, it sucks. They'd lost at that point 72 in battle and suicide. But remember, I, I said to them, Roger, think of how strong you have to be to withstand the loss of 72 of your brothers. I couldn't do that. Could you do it? Right, Roger, he's quivering up. And, and then Kirsty, you talk, and all of a sudden he turns to you and he grabs you and he says, hey, you're going to save the world. And you say, no, we're going to improve it. Like out of a fucking movie, Kirsty. It was unbelievable. Like, holy shit. It was incredible. But, I mean, it came from the heart. Like everything that we do, it comes from the heart. 